Hey guys, it's Paul once again, and this time I'll be reviewing Albino by Media Home Entertainment. The movie was made in 1976. It was released probably in the early 80s on the VHS by Media Home Entertainment. You're looking at the only VHS release of this movie, at least in the U.S. I'm pretty sure it wasn't released anywhere else in the world on the VHS, but I could be wrong. But uh, that's what makes this movie so obscure. This is the only release of this movie on VHS. Originally released theatrically as The Night of the Ascari, and it was on TV in the 80s as Whispering Death. Whenever I would come across this box art online, when I was doing my research looking for titles, it always intrigued me. You got a girl cowering in the corner and uh, a hand holding a sharp knife and some weird looking afro dude in the background. It looks like a slasher movie, right? It looks like something gory and it's a title we don't recognize so you probably think it's a really obscure kind of horror slasher film. But this is not a horror movie. Now when doing research on the movie when I was trying to decide whether I should do a review on it because it was such an obscure title with a hand holding a sharp knife. I read some reviews on IMDb. It only had 81 votes and only had four reviews on IMDb, so I knew right then that it was a pretty obscure movie. But one of the reviews sparked my interest. It said, Parents and those sensitive to violence should be cautioned that this is an extremely gruesome film with explicit scenes of rape, murder, torture, and humiliation. Well, of course, that would interest me, right? The film has none of that. I mean, it does have murder, rape, and all these other things, but they're not explicit. There's nothing gruesome in this movie. That kind of disappointed me. I don't know what kind of person wrote that review. They must have been a real prude because nothing in the movie is really that explicit. Now, despite how obscure this movie is, it does have a couple big names in it. It has Christopher Lee. He's been in over 250 movies. He probably doesn't even remember being in this movie. And it also has Sybil Danning. Now, Christopher Lee, he plays um, this police chief in South Africa, and he's trying to combat this terrorist group of... Uh, native Africans who want to kill the white man. We find out more about this terrorist group. It's led by a black albino man. Everyone gets confused and they call him a white man, but then later in the movie you realize he's a black albino. They're going into the villages raping and pillaging. I mean, you really don't even see a rape scene by uh, by these guys. Not until later in the movie you see one rape scene with Sybil Danning. But for the first half hour or so of the movie, it's really boring. Nothing really happens. We meet some of the white people, and I guess it's supposed to demonstrate the, the class differences between the black natives and you know, the white people. I mean, we learn more about uh, certain char white characters in the movie when, in fact, they play such a little role in the movie. But I think it's just to show that they have a higher class than the black people, and it's kind of, I guess, justify the anger of the black natives, that the white man is uh, living a lot better than they are, and they're kind of pissed. The movie takes a turn when this ex-police officer's wife gets raped by the albino. He wants to go on a revenge spree. He wants to take down the whole terrorist group himself and get revenge. But uh, here's the weird thing about this whole movie. The movie is really boring. It's made really bad. I mean, if you're going to go to Zimbabwe to shoot a movie, at least do it right. If you're going out of your way to freaking Africa to shoot a movie, do it right. It's a pretty bad movie, but I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But the weird thing about this movie is the albino. He is the creepiest freaking guy in this movie. Uh, he's probably the most creepiest character I've ever seen in a movie because you know there's some there's just something weird about this guy it looks like a black guy with white makeup on his face he's not a real black albino it gets even more weird I was doing a little research and I found out that the actor that was playing the albino was actually a white guy a white German guy with white makeup on his face I guess to make him look more pale and they put an afro on him like a short little afro I, when I first saw the movie I thought it was an actual black guy with white makeup on his face because he has some black features so it was a real shock to find out that this was actually a white guy with white makeup and an afro. I guess they needed um, someone who spoke English well to play this role, so they just found um, someone in Germany to play this character. But he's a really creepy looking dude, even without the makeup, because I saw some pictures, and he's a pretty creepy looking guy. And if there's any reason to watch this movie, it's not for Christopher Lee. It's not for the revenge story. It's just to look at this friggin' creepy albino. Because every time he pops up on the screen, I can't stop looking at him. He's friggin' scary looking. So this one guy who's trying to get revenge on this whole terrorist organization, he goes out with a, a friend of his. I think it's his father's butler or something, a black guy. And I don't even know why the black guy would go with him. Does he really think he has a shot of taking down a whole terrorist organization? He takes along this black guy. The black guy's friggin' crazy too. I would think, well, I'm not going with this crazy white man. But he, apparently he does, and they're trying to 
take down this whole terrorist organization. So they're running through the desert for, I guess, a couple of days. In the process, they do kill a couple of terrorists, but uh, eventually they do get to the albino. And I'm thinking, well, what happened to this whole terrorist organization? I only saw that they killed like five of them. I thought there were a lot more in the desert, but apparently I think they only killed like five or six of them. And you know there's a lot more of them because in this one scene where they're actually at a meeting, the terrorist organization is having a secret meeting. So where are they in the desert? They're not protecting their leader, the albino? But that kind of confused me. Another thing is that at this meeting, they're speaking English. Throughout the movie, they're speaking their native language, which makes sense. But at the meeting, when there's not supposed to be any other white folks, they're speaking English. Of course, I know that they're doing that for the audience, the English-speaking audience, so they can understand what they're saying. They're actually saying in English, uh, kill the white man, kill the white man, just chanting like that. Of course, they would say it in their native language. But I hate when movies do that because they're breaking down the fourth wall. It's like when a movie has a phone number in it. They always put 555 and then some random four digits at the end. I mean, th you don't have to remind me that I'm watching a movie. So eventually, the, the, the black friends of Tarek, the guy seeking revenge, he dies or something. I forget exactly what happens to him. But now uh, Tarek is on his own and he's, uh, the albino has him cornered. And while he's on the ground, the albino is telling him all the, the, the juicy details of raping his wife. This pisses him off. Something happens and now uh, Tarek is chasing the albino, shoots him in the back. Albino's still running after being shot in the back with a rifle, shoots him again, and uh, albino just stops and says, finish me off, kill me now. And then Tarek's like, no, you run. And the stupid albino, he listens to him and he's running as if he, Tarek's gonna let him run away. But he catches up to the albino and he um, stabs him a bunch of times. Now, uh, all these death scenes, like stabbings and all this stuff is off screen. I think there's also a scene where a guy gets cut in the throat, but that's done off screen too. A lot of this stuff is off screen. It's not gruesome. Nothing in this movie is gory. Don't expect a gore fest. It's not bloody. There's one scene where they have to torture a guy for information. I think they, they burn his stomach with some uh, brush or something, but, but still you don't see it. And then even when they extract the information from this guy, they ended up killing him anyway, like I said, with the knife in the throat. But you don't get to see it. You don't really get to see anything in this movie. It's as if they told the effects guy, oh, you could stay home. We really, we're just going to wing it without the special effects. We'll save a couple bucks. That's what it really seems like to me. So after Tarek finally gets his revenge against the albino, he's hiding in a cave. Christopher Lee and his troop are closing in on him because they wanted to stop him from getting revenge on the albino. I don't know why. Just let him do what he wants. These guys are terrorists anyway. That's when Tarek realizes his wife is dead still and that he wants to be with her. And then what he pretty much does is opens fire on the police troop and they end up shooting him. It's real. It's really an act of suicide. Now a few other things that stood out to me in this movie, one of them is the title card. They just inserted a title card on a solid color background. Because this is not the uh, movie's original name, um, they just inserted the title. But what bothers me is that they couldn't take a screenshot, like a still of the movie, and just uh, put the name over it. It's just like spliced in it looks really stupid and awkward um other problems is the music the music is like the same two songs over and over and over again every time someone's dying you hear that very cliche sad song now another thing that stood out to me in this movie is one of the quotes in the movie it's actually kind of funny when they find out that sally the uh, character played by sybil danning when they find out she was raped and murdered one of the guys says uh what does he say he says um we're gonna do to him what they did to her and the first thing I thought of is, what, you going to rape them? I mean, really? Um, of course, you know, I thought about it. I'm like, well, they mean they're going to kill them. But, uh, I don't know, that was just the first thing I thought of because you really don't even see the rape of, I mean, the murder of uh, Sybil Danning. You mostly see the rape. So the first thing I thought of naturally was, oh, so you guys are going to rape them. That would make this movie a lot more interesting. Now, the lighting is really bad. A lot of the lighting is really hard lighting. And uh, the camera work is not very good. I don't know what kind of crew they sent into Zimbabwe, but it's not that good a movie overall. It's pretty boring, in fact, and the only reason to really watch this movie is to look at that really creepy albino and maybe watch him rape Sybil Danning. The rape scene is not, like, brutal. It's just really awkward because this guy looks so freaking creepy. Um, that's pretty much uh, the gist of this movie. Not really a horror movie, but if you're interested, check it out. If you're a collector, get it because it is a cool box. It's one of the original media tapes. Um, and it's the only VHS release of this movie. has some cool artwork and everything, so check it out, and uh, I guess that's it. And this has been Paul. See you later.